Now, Roman numeral three, uh, we, where we introduce what's called delta H reaction. It is the change in enthalpy of reaction and functionally or a working definition is it is a measure of the heat energy gained or last, uh, let's put, <laughs> lost for a reaction at constant pressure. Um, and uh, an exothermic reaction or system, uh, to use the phrase that we've uh, started to use, has delta H less than zero. Uh, I put just delta H there because we'll see a couple different subscripts there as we go through this chapter, um, uh, for which all, uh, when they're less than zero, the reaction is exothermic. And an exothermic uh, reaction has the reaction releasing energy to the surroundings. As an example, I have the uh, combustion reaction here for propane. Uh, we've seen this one before. We can even be asked to write combustion reactions. This one comes balanced. We see that the products are carbon dioxide and H2O gas. And uh, this is in a, a, a type of information that you'll see in problem statements uh, that you'll be solving on the homework, where delta H reaction is given minus 2,044 kilojoules per mole. Uh, so the minus sign means that this is an exothermic reaction. And our way of thinking about that is this is the amount of energy per mole that is produced. So uh, that's what it means when it's releasing energy. So 2,044 kilojoules per mole are produced uh, by this reaction. And one helpful thing to do uh, that I like to do is if it's a product, write the energy as a product. And I put in plus here even though there's a minus sign here or minus 2,044 kilojoules per mole are produced. The minus sign tells you it's produced. The, uh, so this is a little redundant, but uh, better to say the same thing twice than not at all. Minus 2,044 kilojoules means it's produced. It says produced right there. And it's a product. And another note, there will never be anything negative in this reaction. So uh, this plus here means it is produced. Okay, so uh, exothermic reaction has delta H less than zero. It's a negative number. It is releasing energy. And uh, what we can do is we can write unit conversion factors uh, for this. And uh, I'll write a couple of them. So I like to treat this 2044 as the coefficient. Uh, and so let me show you what I mean. So uh, I'll put back in the minus sign and say there are minus 2,044 kilojoules for that much energy produced. Per one mole of, C of propane. Okay. And uh, that's where the per mole comes from. It comes from if there is a one coefficient now, where it's complicated a little bit more anyway, is that this same amount of energy is produced. And again, after right now, we won't write the produced part. Per five moles of oxygen reacted there's a unit conversion factor. And I know, so uh, it says per mole, but that's per mole of thing with a one coefficient. It's per five moles of O2. It is per three moles of carbon dioxide. And we could do something similar for the H2O. All right. So that's for an exothermic reaction in which energy is released or produced. Uh, we are going to now look at what's called an endothermic reaction. That has delta H greater than zero 
and the reaction taking in energy from the surroundings. And we'll always be looking at this from the system or the reactions point of view. And so when the reaction takes in energy from the surroundings, that will be considered positive. Now, um, what I like to do here, oh, oh, what you'll notice is that I've flipped the reactants and products. That has changed the sign of delta H, but not the number. Uh, let me say a few words about that. So we said that as you do a reaction, you, you are going to change the positions of the atoms. Those positions are going to change the potential energy. And so we're going to say that delta H is an indication of the change in potential energy of the atoms as they go from reactants to products. And um, as that happens, this release or taking in of energy, this is a taking in of energy, from the surroundings is going to be energy that is incorporated or released from this reaction. So let me see if I can say that slightly better. So as the positions of the atoms changes, there will be a change in potential energy. That change in potential energy is associated with bringing in heat energy from the surroundings. Heat energy is from kinetic energy of the surroundings. So we have potential energy of the atoms in the reaction. We have heat energy either, in this case, coming in from the surroundings to uh, change that potential energy. Anyway, we'll say more about that. For now, I want to show you that uh, this is greater than zero. Uh, energy is taken in. That is endothermic reactions. And we can put plus 2,044 kilojoules as a reactant. So energy is a reactant. Or energy can be thought of. Energy is a reactant going into this reaction to make the products. Okay. All right, so delta H is the change in enthalpy of reaction. The rest of the chapter is how do we measure and use delta H reaction? What does it mean? Uh, and uh, because it's gonna be an amount of heat energy, we're going to say things that relate it to the um, number or to the potential energy of the reactants and products. All right, but we need a system for measuring it, for calculating it, and here's our first one. Uh, we use a coffee cup calorimeter. A coffee cup calorimeter is literally two coffee cups. Styrofoam is best because they are contain, they are the most insulating. Put an insulated cover on top, a thermometer, a stir bar. Uh, you can also swirl so that you don't need the stir bar. And then we have some solution in here or some water as we'll see. All right, so uh, we will see that um, when we place reactants inside cups that the system will typically be 75% uh, plus reaction, 25% material. And I'll show you again what this means more specifically. Um, so, but the, uh, again, that is the definition of the system. The surroundings is everything else. Including the water or solution. And the assumption when using a coffee cup calorimeter is that the coffee cups are perfectly insulating. Which means no heat escapes or goes into the coffee cups. No heat. goes into coffee cups. 
and therefore all of the heat from the system, which whether it's a reaction or material, all heat from uh, re, uh, system goes to surroundings. And uh, I'll show you on the next page, we have an equation uh, that does that. Q, lowercase q, is our symbol for heat. So Q for the system equals minus Q surroundings. And the minus sign only shows up because there's a change in the direction of heat flow. If the system is giving off heat, then the surroundings is taking heat in. There's a directional difference there, and that's what the minus sign means. The Q system could be positive or negative. Doesn't matter, it depends on if the reaction, uh, if it's a reaction is endothermic or exothermic. All it says is, if this gives off energy, this takes it in. If the reaction system takes in energy, then the surroundings are giving off energy. All right, so now we have the coffee cup calorimeter equations. I'm gonna ask you to draw a line down the middle. We do have two cases. We have that the system is a reaction. And we have the system as a material. So similar, though, I think it's best to keep these two sets of equations separate in your mind. Um, I don't know, we'll see as we go. System as a reaction, then Q system becomes Q reaction. It is equal to minus Q of the surroundings. And what we will see is that the surroundings in the coffee cup calorimeter will be everything but since the coffee cups keep all of the heat energy inside then the functionally the, the surroundings are the solution inside the coffee cups now I'm going to keep working these so the solution and remember Q is heat uh, Q solution is going to be the mass of the solution times the specific heat capacity of the solution times the temperature change of the solution where temperature change will always be the final temperature of the solution minus the initial temperature and that goes for all changes. It's always final minus initial. Okay, now a couple things about the solution. So, and we'll see this in our examples. The solution will have, be an aqueous solution in which water is the solvent and it will be 90 plus percent water, which means we can make two assumptions. One is that the specific heat capacity of the solution is equal to the specific heat capacity of water. Which is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. Uh, the other is that the mass of the solution, or sorry, the density of the solution is the same as the density of water. And where the density of water is 1.00 gram per milliliter, which means that in a problem, if I say there are 250.0 milliliters of a certain solution, we can assume that that is 250 grams of solution.
All right. So that's the setup. That's the solution part. Uh, now let's do Q reaction. Q reaction is going to be the one that's quite different. It is going to involve our delta H, our delta H of reaction, since there is a reaction in this problem. And uh, that's going to be times moles reacted. And it won't come up very much, but these are moles reacted with a one coefficient. We saw that coefficients matter in their relationship to delta H. If it comes up for us, I'll let you know. All right. So... And the way that you solve problems is there are one, two, three, four, five, six different things that you need to know. And of course, in typical, typical Chem 1010 fashion, we'll give you the information for five of them and you'll have to solve for the last one. The last one mostly being delta H reaction that you'll have to find. Anyway, we'll do some problems coming up, but this is the overall setup. It's similar when the system is a material Let's assume that the material uh, is aluminum and that aluminum is being placed in, uh, will typically be placed in water. So uh, aluminum, so placed in water. The material is typically placed in water. You'll see a couple times where there's two different materials, but um, typically it's a solid placed in a liquid at least. This time, it's the heat of the uh, aluminum equals minus Q, uh, or the heat of the water. So this just says all the heat given off or taken in by the aluminum goes to the water or comes from the water. Now these are two materials. These materials, so no reaction involved. They will both have identical terms to the solution part over here meaning that Q aluminum equals the mass of the aluminum times the specific heat capacity of the aluminum times the temperature change of the aluminum. Same thing for um, water, mass of water. times the specific heat capacity of the water, times the temperature change of the water. And I think the one thing that comes up pretty frequently in these types of problems is that we're solving for T final, and that in these types of problems, T final is the same for the aluminum and the water, because you'll be mixing them together. So T final is the same. For aluminum and water you're not there you won't in fact have two separate t-finals they'll both be the same and that's what you'll be solving for as i think we'll see that seems like a good place to stop we'll save the example